Okay. We're going. Um, so, so I guess Ozzy and Jason have limited D and D current D and D anyway uh, experience and roll 20 experience. So we'll have to help them along the way. Um, but this is a good module to do it. It's definitely sort of a throwback uh, meat and potatoes kind of module. Um, I roll everything. I don't use like uh, the GM secret roll, DM screen kind of thing. So I roll everything out in the open. So everybody will see the rolls and see what happens. I like to let, <laughs> uh, you know, chance fall where the where the dice fall so um whatever whatever the dice says goes um we did have some house rules before but we don't really do that we just operate under the main one which is don't be a dick. don't be a dick um i think that pretty much encompasses everything so um as long as as long as we stick to that uh, everything else works itself out um has everybody already updated their characters I believe so. Okay. Um, I don't really have any house rules that uh, are separate from what are in the player's handbook, um, except that uh, for, uh, um, I'm sorry, inspiration. Yeah. So the way I've been doing inspiration is that at, Every session, everybody gets an inspiration. Uh, you can mark it on your sheet if you want to. And inspiration works uh, like uh, the way that I do it is like a like a lucky dice. So let's say you roll a crappy two hit or something like that. Uh, you can re-roll that and use your inspiration to do that uh, once per session. You can use it okay. for an attack, a saving throw, or an ability check. You, yeah, you have to um, declare that you're using it first, or no, you can use it after, okay. just like a lucky roll. So if it's, you can find out afterwards. You can do it. That's fine. We did that in the last campaign I did, and it, it, it you know, it didn't, it didn't really upend the, the, the fairness. So, um, you know, I didn't really have a lot to go over. I think it's probably best to just sort of like get going and figure it out as we go along as far as, you know, how the Roll20 works and uh, the basic rules of d and I did stick a, a uh, in the PC folder under your journal at the top right, um, under player handouts, there's a 5e reference guide. Click on that and open it up. It gives you some just basic stuff. And check that out at your leisure if you need to. Um, does anybody have any questions for me before we? I'm actually just going to jump on in. Uh, no. I don't think so. Okay. So, despite its location far to the north of Waterdeep, the city of Neverwinter enjoys a moderate climate. The river that bisects the city is perpetually warmed by Mount Hotenau, a volcano to the north that violently erupted half a century ago, causing massive destruction and chaos in the city. Life has mostly returned to normal thanks to the leadership of Dagold Neverember, a Waterdavia noble with questionable lineage to Neverwinter's royal family. For whatever reason, your paths have led you here to Neverwinter, and regardless of your goals, whatever your aspirations or grand plans, they all require resources, namely coin. Word has made it to you, or made it to you all, that a dwarf by the name of Gundren Rockseeker is in need of help and has the coin to pay. Today, Gundren is interviewing prospective employees at the Wobbling Goblin, a rough and tumble tavern in the heart of the city. As you approach the tavern, a group of people are exiting in various states of disarray. Some are limping, others have bloody noses, swollen, slowly blackening eyes. A stout red-haired dwarf leans out at the tavern door, 
with a massive tankard in his left hand and yells after them. Don't be calling us. We'll be calling you. <laughs> he laughs. He takes a huge swig of the, of the uh, tankard, wipes his, wipes his mouth and beard off on his sleeve. And uh, he sees you approaching. Oh, what have we here? If you're looking for work, come in and let's have a drink and a wee chat. And he turns and uh, goes to walk inside. He, he bumps into the, the door frame on the way in. Oh, excuse me, lady. And uh, he goes in and doesn't hold the door for you. He just walks in. What would you like to do? Krasmir will uh, glance over at Varial, sort of shrug, uh, and he'll open the door and kind of move out of the way for for everyone else to go in. Okay. You uh, inside the tavern, there are several people drinking, playing dice games, playing cards, and uh, you see Gundren seated at the table, and he kind of you know slaps the chairs to sit down and. Uh, motions for you to come over and he raises his hand to the uh, barkeep and she shuffles over and re-pours his drink have a seat then very else <clears throat> moves over sits across the table okay ah an elf my favorite and he rolls his eyes <laughs> a good day to you sir <laughs> I think Krasmir uh, gingerly steps over someone passed out on the floor <laughs> yeah. before he scoots in his chair. And uh, I, I'll, I'll greet Gundren in Dwarven. Ah, oh, you speak the tongue, do you? Barno. I do. <clears throat> Barno walks over and sits down next to Varyl and Kashmir and greets Gund uh, Gundren too. Uh, well, I am looking for work. Tell me about yourselves. And, uh, t and tell, tell me what you see. Tell me what he sees uh, with, with your character. So, uh, um, Krasmir Kras is um, sort of tall, ver very slim, though. Uh, very angular features. His face is sort of haggard, though, and, and makes him look a little bit older than he actually is. Uh, you know, like someone who's been very sick at some point in their life. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, most notably, he doesn't dress like a, you know, a wizard would. He eschews the robe and, and all that kind of crap. He looks more like, a, you know, like a middle-class merd member. Okay. See the bookworm at the end, and he looks up at uh, up at Brevo. Oh, you're a big one. Where are you from? Ooh. Can he I'm hear me? Plain. I can hear you. <laughs> uh, Revo is from the plains. Sandlot people. Hmm. Don't poke me with that armor. It's sharp. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so Ephraim is the one who's not here, right? Yeah. And a fellow dwarf and elf. I know you're from the tree somewhere. How about you? The one at the end. Speaking to Varial? No, uh, Farnor. Farnor? Oh. Sorry. Uh, my name is Farnor. You know, I come from uh, I'm an elf druid hailing from uh, Eversica. Eversica. <clears throat> so what, uh, what skills do you have? I, I do have a bit of a job. I've got uh, goods that need getting to Fandolin. 
Berthin's provisions. I'll need a driver and some escorts to make sure no filthy bandits or what not have you gets at me stuff. He drinks his ale, puts it down and looks at you all. I have some small talents in the magical arts. I'm sure quite enough for any brigand or bandit that might prey on a caravan. Mm. You say. And you, Mr. Farnor? I have uh, some talents of uh, healing, so if anyone has problems along the way, I could uh, heal them up. Aye. The dwarf, I need no task. Capable, of course. This big fella here, hopefully he's as strong, as bad as he smells. What about the elf? I have uh, no small skill with a variety of weapons. Uh, preferred, of course, is a whip, so... And I am able to uh, fetch several foes. Hmm. What do you think, Sildar? And he, and he looks over at... Uh, are you guys in the tavern map? Yeah, okay. He looks over at this guy here. I'll shift click you all. Yeah, he looks over at this guy here. Sildar turns and just kind of grunts. They seem all right. Better than the last bunch. And um, he says, um, like I said, Stuff the Fandolin, Barathin's Provisions is the name. Mostly mining stuff. I have made a bit of discovery, and he, and he like taps a, he has like a, a leather map case, and he taps it, and Sildar's like, Gundren, not here. Oh, right, right. And uh, so he says to you, so I've heard you talk, but now there's a wee test. No magic or steel. What say you? Up for a test. A test of strength? Is it a written test? It's not exactly written. Yes, sort of strength. No. Well. Ah, well, let's get on with it. Let's start with you, Elf. And uh, he stands up and leans across the table and he takes a swing at Varial. And Varial, I want you to roll a perception check, please. Perception, you said? Yeah. Just to see if you're surprised. Hmm, yeah. He's a little shit face, so he <laughs> leans in and tries to cold cock you, but you're ready for him. So now we all roll initiative. So uh, click your token and click the initiative button. Wait, make sure it's all cleared out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Feral, you're in there twice, but you have the same score, and that's weird. What's the initiative button again? Click your token. You click and on your character. Yeah, it's, there's one on your character sheet, or you can click your token, and one will appear on the top left of the screen. Oh. All right, Sildar is rolling. Let me fix his character real quick. He's rolling on the GM level. All right. So, never whisper roll. Got it. All right, so. Krasmir, uh, you go first. You took the alert, did you not? I did, yeah. Yes. So I, I think I sort of noticed how uh, Gundren was starting to shift his weight, so I figured he was about to do something. Uh, is, is there like a candle on the table or anything? Uh, yeah, yeah, there certainly right. would be a candle. 
food. I'm, going to, I'm going to try to grab it and like throw the hot wax into Gundren's face. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Make a, uh, just make a, a, just a dexterity roll or a D20 with your dexterity modifier. Okay. Dex check. Okay. Uh, yeah, you hit him. And uh, he actually has a candle on his hat, too. And uh, he snuffs the candle out on his hat. <laughs> That's a dirty trick! And, and uh, with that, I'm going to like scoot off the end of the bench and get low under the table. And uh, Revo, it's your turn. Now, again, this is... Uh, we're not... We're just brawling, so... Uh, if you want to punch, kick, or headbutt or do whatever you could uh, simply roll your just a strength check so hit the strength and then it will roll to hit i'm not trying to hurt the guy you know just give him a little shove how do i do the strength yeah, you can click, click on the word strength uh, mm -hmm. over there on the left side On the character sheet? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. over in that like left hand bar. There you go. Yeah, you hit. So, do you want to? What do you want to do? You can, you can, you can try to shove him if you want. Yeah, uh, give him a shove. Or you can try to punch him in the face. Nah, nah, nah. Let's give him a little shove. Okay, you shove. Try to work him. him up. So, how shove works is um, it's versus his 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 decks or whichever. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Yeah. All right. Okay. You you shove him. So you can either you do one of two things. You can knock him back five feet or push him onto the ground and knock him prone. Which would get up. Okay, yeah, that would give other people advantage on attacks against him. Okay, he's knocked prone. Farnor. Um, they're like maybe like pebbles or something around. Uh, there's like beer mugs. There's like pieces of meat and chicken. There's uh, implements, wooden spoons, that sort of thing. Okay, so um, I think I'll just uh, stand up and uh, move a little bit away, you know, just trying to assess the situation before I act and do anything. <clears throat> okay, is that your turn? Yeah. Okay, Ephraim, uh, we're going to play that Ephraim has had too much to drink already. He slammed them <laughs> and uh, he's sleeping. He's just snoozing on the bar just a little. Sleepy time. Uh, yeah. Varial. He just tried to cold cock you, but the huge half orc knocked him on the ground. Uh, Varial leaps up and um, grabs a uh, mug off the table. Let me know if there's too many actions, and then and gives him a, a swift kick in the ribs. Okay, uh, roll to hit with advantage. Just a strength, straight strength. You can use one of your weapon attacks if you want to. Really? No. Yeah. No. Yeah, so we were not. This was without weapons. No, no. Or? I mean, I meant just for just for the roll purposes. But yeah, just roll, just roll, just hit strength. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you miss. You don't spill any of the ale that you picked up in the mug, uh, but you 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 miss him terribly. Uh, Gundren gets up. He uses half of his movement to stand up from being prone, and he looks at uh, Revo. And he looks at Varial and says, That was dirty. That's my ale. And he jumps up on the table. And uh, <laughs> he takes a swing at you. Ed. Oh, Jesus. Oh. 
take a swing at who? Uh, burial. Okay. Why did it roll zero? It shouldn't roll zero. Oh, because it's plus four. Okay, so let's roll. This should be five, actually. So you take five, five hit points of damage. All right. Ah, that felt good. And uh, he reaches, he reaches uh, desperately for the ale, but uh, you sort of uh, faint out of the way. Sildar stands up and he's like, oh, Gundren, I'm still sore from the last one. And uh, he rushes towards Revo, and uh, he tries to um, subdue you. He tries to wrap his arms around you. So he's going to make an athletics check versus uh, you pick athletics or acrobatics, whichever your best score is. Athletics. All right, so roll it. Do I click on it? Mm-hmm. He got you. All right, you are grappled, uh, which doesn't mean anything except for the fact that you cannot move. You can still attack, do everything, but your your speed is zero. And I'm just going to use that to show you're grappled. That's his turn. Uh, Revo. I think I'm going to um, take a swing at this guy. Try to go for a stomach check. Okay. Did we skip Krasner? Uh, he's next, I believe. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Wait, did Revo go twice? No, no. Yeah. Yeah, he's next. So go ahead and just make a attack roll. Just, just roll strength. Or if you wanted to try to break his grasp. Okay. Yeah, with a 10, you miss. Uh, you're able to. He's, he's got your arms, and he's able to just kind of like turn his head. Yeah. Uh, squirm his body out of the way, so you're unable. Or, or maybe maybe just glancing blow, but it does cause him no damage. Uh, Krasmir. Uh, how sturdy are these tables? Are they, are they pretty hefty? Very, yeah. All right. So uh, I, I, I'm a little noodle arm dude so i don't think i'll be tipping him off i'm gonna grab the greasiest piece of chicken mutton or whatever i can find on the table okay easy enough. just kind of slide it down the surface hoping the gundren steps on it and falls okay yeah um just make a um a d20 with use your dex modifier okay oh my goodness okay yeah it is so <laughs> slippery that uh, and greasy and the tables are all filthy and wet it just slides off and onto the floor <laughs> <laughs> Um, wait, Rio just went, did he not? Oh, you know what? Yeah, he did. I got it. You're in there twice somehow. Uh, far north, it's your turn. I'm kind of getting tired of this, so I come around over by, uh, by grinding over here. As I pass by, I pick up a, a mug and I try to, you know, smack him over the head with the mug. Okay. Roll a strength roll. roll. <clears throat> okay. Are you smacking Sildar or Gundren? Uh, Gundren. Gundren. Okay. Uh, you hit, but it hits on his helm and uh, deflects off. It doesn't seem to cause any damage. Um, Varial. All right, Varial will uh, uh, form a uh, like a roundhouse kick and try to sweep a uh, Gundrum's foot. Okay. The strength. strength Let's see if we can knock him off the table. Okay. Gundren, you just miss. Uh, yeah, he's armored. He leaps up in the air. Ha <laughs> ha! Faster than you, elf. And um, 
he will. He'll try to take it back out on the on the elf. He swings at you with his fist. Yeah, it's all right. Four bludgeoning, and he's, he's gonna stay where he is. He looks around, and you notice the people in the bar. They're just sort of like half interestedly watching. They're still playing cards. Uh, the barmaids are still serving drinks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nothing new to them. Uh, Sildar, he will, he will try to slam Revo to the ground, pick him up and suplex his ass. So I'll roll fist to see if he can do that. He's unable to pick you up. You're just too heavy. He's, he just like hugs you, squeezes you tighter, but you're just like, star fishing out on him and he just he can't get good leverage to throw you to the ground and it's your turn Revo um try to break his grasp okay so guy off you, you'd roll another athletics or acrobatics check whichever you pick versus and and he will try to contest it with athletics athletics damn help Ah, he's not big, but he's like, you know, he's wiry. He's like, uh, he's scrappy. Uh, so <laughs> you try to break free and he's just like not budging. Uh, Krasmir. Uh, so seeing my, my lamb chops slide off the table, I'm just going to pick up the plate that it was on and like do the, the whole twirl and disc, discus throw thing. Nice. And try to bring Gundren. <laughs> okay. We'll disc off. Um, Go for it. Roll that dex attack. Oh, yeah. You, you hit and you knock his helmet off. Clank. And uh, let's see. Just do whatever your one plus your dex modifier, which would be two. Three total. Three. Got it. All right. He falls. Uh, he knocks his helmet off, but he stays. Actually, I'm going to have him make a, uh, make a dex save to see if he stays up on the table. There's sloppy mutton grease and spilled beer. <laughs> and he was just beaned in the temple. No, he does not. He, uh, he falls to the ground and he trips. He slips on the edge of the table, uh, knocks his head on the table a little bit and falls prone to the ground. I'll taunt him in Dwarven and then seeing that I'm sort of running out of ammunition, make a beeline toward it's the bar to start picking up bottles and, and <laughs> mugs. Reload. Restock my quiver. All right. <clears throat> uh, Farnor. He's just fallen in front of your feet, so you would have advantage on the attack since he's prone. Um, I think uh, going to go over or walk over to uh, Varial and uh, heal him up real quick with uh, Cure Wounds. He okay. seems pretty low in health. So let's talk about a D and D rule called an attack of opportunity. So if you leave um, a combatant's space, if you move more than five feet away from them, they get an attack of opportunity as one of their reactions against you. So um, you might be better off if you wanted to. You could move to here. Oh, uh, I see what you mean. Still okay. reach very. Still be able to touch them. Okay. Yeah, and not get attacked. Attacked. Okay, I'll do, I'll do that then. Okay. <clears throat> All right, just um, now your spell is it a spell that you're using? Yeah, it's a spell. It's okay. a spell that I go and touch him. So right. just uh, click on the spell, right? Yeah, just open up the the spell and just click, and it'll populate in the chat. Nice. Thank you. Very well. You feel much better. And it's your turn. Assuming Farnor, you're done moving. Yeah, I'm done moving. Okay. Very well. Uh, all right. Um, Varial will um, dump dump the mug of ale on him and throw it at his head. <laughs> throw it Not the ale! Spike it. Stupid elf. Uh, he's dripping wet and... Um, Make an attack roll with advantage. Uh, 
do I use what I use Dex since it's a thrown attack? Or are you gonna throw it at him? Yeah. Yeah. You throw it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And while you're attacking him, uh, Eleanor, another round. He's like yelling from the ground, ordering more ale. <laughs> <laughs> And I, uh, uh, Gurriel yells out in Dwarven as well. I think this dwarf's had too much old. <laughs> Every one oh, at the bar nods their head. <laughs> uh, 20 oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so one plus whatever your dex modifier is. That'd be four. So four to Got it. Cool. Gundren will stand up. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. And uh, he will uh, take a swing at his favorite target. <laughs> <laughs> the filthy elf. Nine misses. He's, he's, he's overcome with emotion about the spilled beer and he can't uh, connect. <laughs> uh, Sildar will again try to slam Revo. It's like Clash of the Titans down there. <laughs> so <laughs> Sildar is going to... Roll. How do we do this? Yeah, so he's going to just try to slam you. So he will fist. 14. What's your AC? 13? 13. All right. So he's able to finally uh, trip you up. He leg sweeps you a little bit and uh, throws you on the ground. And Sildar does three bludgeoning damage to you, Revo. And you are no longer grappled, but you are prone. You can spend half of your movement to stand up, and then you still have the other half of your movement speed remaining. Hmm. I want to go ahead and stand up. Okay. And move back a space? Is that an okay? If you do, he gets an attack of opportunity on you. If you disengage, and unless you can use an action called disengage, uh, but you don't get to attack, that would be your whole move. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm going to roll. I, I guess I'll take a swing at him. All right. Punch the face. Do I click on strength? Mm -hmm. Yeah, strength. Yeah, any like just basic melee attacks, strength. Oh, man, and any like um, thrown or launched thing would be dexterity. Uh, but a six misses. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. he's he's quick, he's wiry and quick, and he dodges your punch. And it is Karazmir's go. All right, so I scoot down the bar a little bit, um, sort of trying to lean between two patrons. I'm like, excuse me, no, do you need that? Here, let me just. I uh, take a mug, uh, but before I throw it, I take a swig, and then I'm going to try to thread the needle right down here okay. at Sildar. Yeah, you have a straight shot. Ah, uh, yeah. He's able I unbalanced to... it when I took that sip. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, he's able to knock it, uh, knock it away. And uh, it spills on Grundin, uh, Gundren again. And Gundren, <laughs> no! He's about to go into a rage. Um, if that's your... Yeah, that, that's it for me. All right, Farnor, you're up. Guess I'll just try to punch uh, uh, Grundin right here. All right, is that strength? Okay. Yeah, you hit him, but it hits just plate armor. Uh, he dodges a little bit, uh, so you miss his face, and you hit him right in his shoulder, his shoulder guard. It smarts your hand, but no damage. Uh, can definitely respect the elf just standing in there in the pocket, throwing hands with the dwarf. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Got to do something. <laughs> Had you pegged for a ranged uh, fighter with the... Um, yeah, very well. It's your turn. All right, so uh, Varial will, will grab a utensil, uh, a fork maybe, off the sure. table. And uh, is actually going to go ahead and provoke the uh, attack opportunity and step back a couple paces. Okay. And throw it. 
at Gundren. Okay. He's going to take a swipe at you with his reaction. Eight and misses. Eight. All right. Beer sprays mm-hmm. everywhere with his punch. <laughs> nice. Yeah, he critted. So, um, what is it? Three. That be three wow. with it. So it's one. It, plus it actually the be three modifier. plus one actually. So, the four damage total. Crit doesn't. Oh, yeah. All right. That's that. All right, Gundren. And uh, Farnor, are you also an elf? Yes. An even skinnier elf. I'm after this one now. And he will <laughs> uh, take a swing at you. God, nine. Fucking beer. And he's like wiping his eyes and misses. Sildar will kick, try to kick Revo in the chest. He like backs up. Elbows back and just like straight kick right to your chest. I know it's his fist. 11. He misses. Or he just hits. It's just like hitting a, hitting a wall. Nothing happens. Uh, Reva, it's your turn. I'm going to go ahead and roundhouse kick Mr. Sildar here. Oh, shit. To the dome. God dang, man. Yeah. Right <laughs> under your huge, slow moving leg, he ducks. <laughs> <laughs> the tree trunk. Uh, Krasmir. Uh, all right. So I want to. I actually don't want to get anywhere near this dwarf. Um, actually, yeah, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to, I imagine Ephraim is so wasted that I can sort of tip him off of the bench with like two fingers. Sure. And then I want to try to kick the bench into Gundren's legs. Okay, under the table. Oh, uh, over there, okay. Yeah, yeah just kind of like. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah, you can make a strength or dex, whichever. Um, oh, definitely dex. Either would work. Okay. Yeah, you hit. Um, nice. I'm going to get... Let's do, roll a d6. Let's see what kind of okay. damage it does. He wasn't ready for that. And then... Uh, okay. Plus your dex modifier of two. So four total. Got it. Okay. And um, I'm going to see if we trip him with that. Mm-hmm. He falls prone again. <laughs> He probably nice. wouldn't if he weren't so faced, but uh, he's yeah. currently not in a good, good shape. It uh, probably actually hit him somewhere in the chest, given the height. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so and then I'll scoot back, it. and that'll be it for me. Okay. Farnal. Well struck, Chris. Can I disengage and try to move away now? Yeah, you can disengage, but that's that's your action. Okay. I'll, I'll disengage. Okay. And Gundren, uh, he, I mean, he is wasted, but he's also bleeding out of his nose a little bit now. So he looks a little, uh, a little rough. So, yeah, you can uh, use your action to disengage and then move your full movement. Okay. Okay. Very old. Where are you going, elves? Uh, very old. Uh, uh, snag a mug off the bar and and chuck it. Where at uh, Gundren's nose? <laughs> An empty one or a full one? An empty one. Okay. Learn from my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> at least it's empty. As he's trying to duck. Um, yeah. Roll out uh, decks. What <laughs> advantage? Uh, actually, disadvantage. Since he's decks on prone creatures is with disadvantage. Really? Yeah, so okay. like, a, yeah, any ranged attack. Yeah. 
So you miss. Oh, well. Missed. Uh, Gundren will stand up. And he will charge Varyl. <laughs> Come at me, elf! And he just, like, tries to just <laughs> headbutt you right in the torso. 13. Just misses. Okay. Um, make an acrobatics check, and I'll see if you, you're able to dodge out of his way and send him reeling into the bar. All right. Yeah. So you pick left or right. Um, we'll just take a step to the right. Okay. He goes charging into the bar, hits the bar so hard, you hear wood crack. And uh, nice. everything on the top of the bar tips over that's not tied down. And uh, Gundren falls unconscious. Actually, can I can I say that uh, Burial just spun around him and is now behind him? Yeah, sure. Cool. Gundren falls unconscious. And then Sildar's like, holds his hands up. Uh, I think we're done here, guys. I assume we uh, passed the test. I would love it if Revo slammed him now when his guard is <laughs> done. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. I'll give you that opportunity if that's something you want to do. How about I just go ahead and give a big bear grip? Return the... Okay, yeah. So you grab you know, it. But laugh. Like, how does it feel? Torp... Oh, no, I... is he hugging me? I can't tell. Ah. Ah. Ah, let me wake him up and he goes over and he gets uh, a uh, a water uh, off the bar and splashes him in the face and Gundren wakes up ah, ah, at least it wasn't beer ah. oh my head Revo can you help me get Ephraim back in his chair he seems to have uh, <laughs> slipped out <laughs> I don't know what happened. Uh, so Gundren walks back over, shakes it off, and uh, he actually uh, talks to the to the bar barkeep for a little bit, and he comes back over and uh, he brings you a round of drinks. That's... Not bad, even the elf. And uh, oh, I'll be drinking his, and he points down to Ephraim, and uh, so he keeps Ephraim's beer in front of himself. <laughs> You fought pretty well. Oh. Uh, you've got the job if you want it. Ten gold a piece. What does it say? What do you say? Sounds like a grand idea. Yeah. I suppose that'll work. Our first spot of adventure, everybody? Absolutely. All right. So he goes on to explain that uh, him and Sildar, um, and they leave. I guess you see them leave and that they have some business to take care of and need to go on ahead. So they leave on a couple of fast horses. And you guys have a wagon that needs to be pulled. Uh, it's got different mining things and provisions. And uh, it's, it's with two oxen, a team of oxen. Uh, and it won't be ready until the morning. They're still gathering a few supplies. So they bid you farewell and it's maybe a little bit afternoon and, um, uh, he's able to stay upright on the horse, uh, drunken constitution of this dwarf. And, uh, they take off into the sunset. Let me wipe the, uh, turn order clean. All right. Battle number one under our belts. So, um, we'll just, if you'd like, is there anything you'd like to do uh, or prepare for or purchase maybe while you're in town before you leave? Yeah, I got, a, I got hit, so I'd like to see about some potion maybe to revive myself or... So... You guys are able to, they've, they, you can get a room for the night. Uh, Gundren has taken care of that. He, they've purchased two rooms you'll have to share. And uh, along with a meal, uh, you'll have to take care of your own ale. 
if 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 you want. Uh, but basically, how it works is, if you get a full rest, you get all of your hit points back, and all of your spell slots if you spent any of your spell slots. So far, nor that spell you used, you would get that yeah, spell slot we'll back. Replenish. But mm -hmm. since I uh, think if I'm an elf, correct, I could meditate right for four hours or something like that and still benefit from it. Yeah, yeah. You don't even really need to sleep. Sleep, you can just right? Kind of, yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. You just uh, you just chill in the uh, in the corner. Maybe do a little tai chi, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Um, and then. Also, too, uh, for those who don't know, that you, you would also get half of your hit dice back. And hit dice are what you would use on a short rest. So let's say you wanted to take an hour off. You could spend your hit dice, and you would roll. Um, at first level, you've got one. So you'd roll whatever your hit dice is. So Revo, yours would be a 12. The casters would be a 6. Um, fighter, what is a fighter, 10? You know, what, whatever, whatever your class starting hit points are that's your hit dice um that's basically how that works but uh is there anything else you want to do so there's no need to purchase any potions or anything like that and uh okay. part of town that you're in is is kind of a little rough and tumble and more catered to drinkers than to uh to to adventurers so to speak so We can just fast forward until the next day, and you guys are. Um, yeah, I think I have everything up. I need. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Yep. All right. Bye bye, Sildar. Okay. So we'll fast forward, and uh, it takes a, just a, a handful of days to get to Fandolin. And let me put you on the big map. So you've, you've got a basic understanding of where you are in the world. I'll put you on the Sword Coast map here. All right, so here's Neverwinter. Boop. Everybody see that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and the high road takes you south. It runs parallel to the Sword Coast. And then Fandolin is down to the south, you'll see. There's a trail um, that cuts off to the east uh, after some time. And uh, you we'll move forward a little ahead. You guys have spent the last few days following the high road south from Neverwinter. And you've just recently veered east along the Tribor Trail. You've encountered no trouble so far, but this territory, you know, can be dangerous. Bandits, outlaws, and untold creatures have been known to lurk along the trail. The wagon you're escorting is packed full of mining equipment, sacks of flour, casks of salt pork, ale, shovels, picks, that sort of thing. And it's pulled by two oxen who are very easy to steer. It, if you drop the reins even, they'll just stop moving. So does anyone, who wants to drive the oxen? Fine, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Make the half orc do all the lame stuff. Make an animal handling check. If you roll a one, they won't like you. Okay, you're fine. These are easy beasts, and uh, they take to your gentle nudging quite well. Um, so you you edge edge your way down the tribor trail. And uh, is is everyone riding in the wagon? Does anyone want to maybe scout ahead or what? Uh, any any sort of special travel arrangements? You just got I one think, wagon, the two ox, and all five of you. I think I'm in the back of the wagon, trying to write and constantly <laughs> bitching at Revo about the bumps and telling him to <laughs> find a smoother track for us. <laughs> Shut <Yeah>. your pile. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think very will wander a little bit ahead. Okay. Keeping an eye out. Okay. And it's a well-worn trail, so I mean, it's you're hitting ruts and things, and it's 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 a rough, rough travel. You know, 
um, it doesn't have independent suspension, so <laughs> you um, you're sore, saddle sore, and wagon sore, whatever you want to call it. Uh, by the time you reach here, it's been a few days. Um, you travel maybe a half a day or so after you've after you turned east on the Tribor Trail, and as you come around a bend, you spot two dead <laughs> horses sprawled about 50 or 60 feet in front of you, blocking the path. Uh, each of which has several black feathered arrows sticking out of it. And very old, you notice this first since you were scouting ahead. And the woods here press close to the trail with steep embankments and dense thickets on either side. Ariel holds up his hand to call for all and sort of crouches down and just focuses, tries to see if he can see anything in the, in the trees. Reva brings the wagon to a halt. Okay. What now? Um, Looks like a setup fellas. So you bring the wagon to a halt, step off a little bit, and this is what you see. Maybe Varial's a little further up. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking maybe uh, Varial would creep up a little bit and sort of see what he can see to either side. And okay, make a perception check. <sighs> yeah, it's uh. Sorry. You hear a lot of birds and, you know, the wind's blowing a little bit, the trees and the bushes are rustling, uh, but you don't, you don't sense anything in the woods. You do notice the arrows, they do look, they do look similar. They're, they're fletched in black feathers and there's flies buzzing around the horses like um, they might've been shot some time ago. Hmm. Uh, all right, let's very little creep up even more cautiously, senses at the max, and uh, investigate the horses okay. as much as possible. All right. So yeah, the and, you, and the horses are clearly dead. the The blood on them is mostly dry, and flies are buzzing around the arrow wounds. Their eyes are gray and sunken into their skulls. Uh, you think they've been dead for about a day, based on uh, you know your 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 look when you get up close to them. Uh, unfortunately, I, uh... what you do notice too is unfortunately these appear to be the very horses belonging to Gundren Rockseeker and Sildar Hallwinter. The oh, saddlebags nice. have been looted, and the map case that Gundren had tapped on his chest is laying on the ground, but empty. Um, I'd like to take a closer look at one of the arrows and see if I if, see if I know anything about the fletching. Maybe do, if, do I, if I know anything in the area, that might oh. explain who or, or what did this. Okay. Um, oops. Let's see here. Hmm. Make a. I don't know. Nature check. Ah. Okay. <laughs> They're not right. familiar to you. But as you're inspecting them, you hear from the thickets. Oh, oh great. And several nasty little creatures emerge from the woods. All right. Those two emerge, these two rush up, these two come from bushes. And let me make sure I got the initiative cleared first. I didn't last time. Okay, uh, everyone roll initiative. All right. I'm, I'm assuming that these little, um, this is on a rise, and I'm 
burials kind of in yes. like a little depression. All right. Yeah, maybe eight, ten feet above you, something like that. Okay. All right. So we need. Ephraim's drunk again. <laughs> Where did we find yeah. this guy? <laughs> <laughs> That's too loud. You can also turn down the music too in your own chat. If if I turn it up too loud and it's too loud for you, you can turn it down on your own. Um, so who needs to roll? Farnor, Varial, Revo, roll initiative. Oh, you did roll a one. Oh, you know what it is? Yeah. You got to highlight your token before you roll initiative. Yeah, sorry. That's okay. I've moved my, I've moved my token as a uh, very old was moved. Is mm -hmm. that okay? Or should I get back with the group? Uh, no, you're good there. If you moved up with him, I can, I can reasonably see that. So there you go. That's about where you were anyway for the initial roll. So, okay. Very old. Uh, you are surrounded uh, by goblins. Nasty oh. little creatures. I see. Okay. Mm. Um, it's What is it uh, double movement to to climb or something like that? Is that right? Right. Tell me what you want to do, and I can tell you if you can get there or not. Um, easy. Um, yeah, I don't. There's no grid on this map. Sometimes I get on my nerves, so I don't put them on there. So. What's? <clears throat> yeah, I was trying to figure out. How much movement I had? You should use the ruler. Also, if you press Q while you move, it'll do like a measurement waypoint thing. It'll help you mm -hmm. figure That's out how much you've moved. That's what I was trying to remember. Thanks. Yeah, it used to be the space key, but it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. It's a Q now. Uh, I can't. Thanks. You got to pick up your token first and hold, like, hold, click, and hold the pickup, and then. Move right. and then click you. I want to try to get up that bank, basically. Okay. Yeah, that's easy enough to do. I think uh, I think that was that's twenty feet of movement right there, roughly. Mm -hmm. So that that's not good. Yeah, that works. Okay, it was all right. Sorry, interface is being wonky. Um, I think I'm within ten feet of one of those guys. <clears throat> yes, no, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I will strike at one of them with my whip. Oh shit! Okay, that's got reach. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll the one towards the north. Yes. Oh, yeah, you hit. Damn. Yeah, you uh, you whip around his neck, and uh, it just, whatever you do to him, it causes a blood ver vessel to burst, and uh, he just chokes, and you see a blood vessel burst in his eyeball, and he drops to the ground. Nice. Yeah. Very so, not messing around. No. That's my turn. Okay, good one. Krasmir. Uh The guys up on that north side ridge, they have. Uh, what are they holding in their hands? Uh, those two have bows. Look like short bows. Okay. Right there. I am going, uh, I'm going to reach into a pouch and pull out a little pinch of sand. 
uh, and kind of extend my hand towards them and speak a a word of power and try to put them to sleep. Okay. Nice. All right, 23 hit points, yeah. They both <sighs> drop their bows and fall asleep. And then I'm going to kind of sit all around this kind of tree stump here and crouch down behind it. And that'll be it for me. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. All right. The goblins. These two. Let's see. Ooh. All right. This one's going to fire at Revo. Short bow. 15. Arr! You <laughs> Reva is a pirate. You say Reva <laughs> takes seven piercing, and this one's going to shoot at Virial. Yeah, right. So I take off seven points, correct? Yep, you do. Uh, so click your token. And in the green part where it says 14, you just click inside there. You can either just type seven and enter, or you can do minus uh, whatever the damage is and enter, and it'll calculate for you. Okay. I did it on the character sheet, but. Yeah, that way that's fine too. Um, This one will rush up and try to schematar you. Fifteen. Yeah, that hits too. Five slashing. And as a bonus action, he will do his nimble escape and try to get away from you. So he can disengage. I'll say he could probably run down to here. All right, Farnor. I'll use a fire bolt on that uh, goblin right there. They just try to they hit Varial. Okay. Uh, he's scrambled down the embankment. You can't really see him. In see fact, him. the only ones that you can see are these guys up on this embankment up here. Okay, and then I'll uh, hit uh, this guy right here. Okay, got it. Uh, a six misses. Revo. Revo How do you do the fire. measurement again? Say what? The little ruler on the left hand side it has like a ruler in a circle. Uh huh. Click on that, and then you could click on your character, and then drag to where. And you could also press Q after you've clicked on your token to do the move one. Yeah. Yeah, like if you pick up your token and then click Q. How far can you move in one? Uh, for you, I think, what are you, a half half orc? I think it's 30. Whatever it says on your character sheet for speed. For what now? For, for speed. Hmm. It's 30. It's like kind of right in the middle up in that square. Yeah. At the top. 30. So you can move 30 feet. Yeah, the ruler seems to be working. The cue is not working. You have to click on your. You got to click on your character and pick it up. You got to uh, hold the gotcha. click down. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can hide behind this tree over here. And make some advancement. Okay, so you can move, and then you can take uh, an action. You can take the hide action. You can take the dodge action, which would give them disadvantage on attacking you. You don't <laughs> always have to attack. So take a dodge. Can I move and dodge? You can move and take the dodge action, which means everyone, until your next turn, they get disadvantage against you. Okay. So what do I dodge? How do I dodge? You you just just say it. Just say I take the dodge action. Take a dodge. Sure. Okay. And then if you want to like mark your character, just click your token, and then there's the 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 button on the bottom, 
you can put a little something on there to remind me <laughs> and or you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dodgy snail. Snails are known to be very dodgy. Uh, burial. <laughs> He's a big target. Yeah. All right. Burial's not feeling too well. Um, going to dip back into these trees and we'll cast Chill Touch on this guy. Here. I think that's a. Oh, it's 120 feet. Okay. Yeah. So a nine misses. Oh wait, is that a or is that a deck save or is that two hit? I don't recall. So it must be a two hit if you rolled a nine. Yeah, it's it's a ranged spell attack. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, sadly, you miss. Kresmir. Yeah, I, I pop up like a gopher uh, and try to arc a firebolt uh, at this lead goblin here. Okay. Ah, oh, critical miss. Uh, the goblins. All right. So these are still asleep and for a minute, I think. Um, this one will circle back. Actually, he's going to come down here and try to attack Revo. He doesn't know he's taking the dodge action, so he will scimitar you. I know it's scimitar. I'm just kidding. So, uh, 11. Uh, this one will try to shoot Varial. This one will try to shoot Revo. Actually, th this one's going to run over here and take all of his action to get over to these guys. Oh, you bastard. He's going to wake him up. You're fools! Wake up! Um, he, he, he moved a double action, so he can't use an action to wake him up. That's his move. Uh, he misses you with a scimitar. This guy is going to short bow varial. Ooh, varial yeah. goes down. Yeah. Done for. My spleen! Yeah, varial, uh, varial <laughs> hits the deck. That's the <laughs> goblin's move. Farnor, you are up. Now, can I hear burial, or does he have to do the saving throws first? Oh, uh, no. Yeah, he, he wouldn't start doing the death saves until his next turn. So I could possibly heal him from yeah. here? Cause, okay, um, since he's down, I'll do the my healing words, you know. Okay. Say my enchantment and, and do a healing word on uh, burial. Feel better, buddy. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh. Yeah, sixty awesome. feet, plenty of room. <sighs> Feral lurches back to life. Or back to Ooh. consciousness, I should say. Yes. Now, Farner, uh, Navarial, I feel like Farner has saved you twice now, or has healed you twice. I, I'm not keeping. Yes, indeed. I'm not keeping track. I'm just saying. Um, Revo, you want to move, Farner? Or I didn't ask you that. You good there? Okay, Revo, you're up. I'm gonna go ahead and take a one-handed battle axe swing at this dude. A string? Uh, just click Battle Axe. Or if you click your token, I put... Uh, there it is. Yeah. All right. Yes, you cleave right into his collarbone, and uh, he screams horribly, but he is still up. Stay where you are. Uh... I'm going to go ahead and advance behind him, but stay in range. Got it. That works. Varial. Um, do 
Okay, Burial will uh, try that chill touch again on the, that guy that ran over to wake up his, his friends. Okay. Mm -mm. Sores right. in the woods. There's a very chilly chipmunk somewhere over there, but not a copy. <laughs> uh, Krasmir. All right. Uh, seeing uh, what is about to happen, um, I, I point at him for another fireball, but I pause uh, and take very careful aim. So I'm going to burn my inspiration here on this one. Okay. And again, you don't have to tell me now. You can do it after. Yeah. That's okay. Good. That's a good point. Yep. Needed to anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, uh, he, you'd knock him off his feet like a sniper shot. And, uh, he's dead. Oh, you can see goodness. smoke burning from his chest. I do a little fist, like nerd fist pump. <laughs> crouch back down. <laughs> yes. Nice. Uh, goblin. This one will attack Revo with his scimitar. A nine does not hit. Um, Farnor. Uh, can I see the this goblin over here? Sorry, let me get my pointer. Uh, yep, that one you can, sure. Okay, I'll try a fire bolt on him. Okay. Ah, I miss. We're just like shooting fireworks off into the woods. Yeah. <laughs> a little hot, a little cold. Um, <laughs> Reva. I'm going to go ahead and finish this guy off with a one handed battle axe again. Yeah, you think anything would do it? You think he might have one hit point. <laughs> nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now I got a good, good roll. He, right. He is dead. Yes, you finish the same cut all the way through. His shoulder falls off. He's a dead goblin. Sorry, uh, bud. Varial, uh, as you as you begin to do whatever it is that you want to, this goblin, I, I surrender. He looks around and he and he and he sees that the battle has turned, and uh, he lays down his his bow and he lays down his scimitar. Don't kill me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. Can I go ahead and move as part of my previous turn? I yes. Didn't get a chance to yes. Move. Sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go ahead and move up next to him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Um. Let's see. Yeah, very will move, we'll move uh, closer to him, and um, we'll we'll say to him, "Do you plan to attack more travelers along this trail?" And he thinks, mm, "Not, not today." <laughs> No, no. Yeek promises. Mm. Not, Look, you not, not good enough, I'm afraid. Wait, I, I can tell you things. Please don't mm. kill Yeek. What happened to the men with these horses? The dwarf and the human. Yeah, I, Yeek knows. You kill Yeek, you'll never find out. And he crosses his arms across his little goblin chest. <laughs> Look, Yeek, I can't stop my friend Varial. He's a mad elf. Make a intimidation check. Uh, fine, fine. 
Yeek will show you. This way. Very well. and, and he points off to the to the north and west. No need to tie Yeek up. Ye Yeek will be good. I will we'll follow him. Okay. The weapons you, at the ready. What do you do with the uh, the sleeping goblins? I guess maybe mm -hmm. after a while they, they you notice that they're starting to stir. Mm. I'll go ahead and just turn off the turn order. We can all just do whatever we want. Uh, we still need to use movement. Nah, no. Nah. Could we uh, sort of bind them without... Um knocking them out of their sleep too quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I think you guys could get them tied up before they become fully awake. You can at least secure them and begin tying them up. You know what? Okay. Yeah. We'll tie them up and just leave them there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, their bugbears got to eat too, right? So pour a little honey on them. The ants get them. <laughs> Uh, all right, so you tie them up, and do you take them with you? You tie them to a tree, or? Well, um, Will so they fit you, on the wagon? Yeah, is Zeke saying uh, we're going to follow his back trail now, or are we, we going to drop off the wagon? Yeah, you would need to stash the wagon, and there's a place to do so here. Uh, you can tuck, okay. tuck it uh, off to the side in between some bushes, plenty of grass for the oxen to munch on. Right there. Yeah, sure. And uh, that's where the other two, other two hidden goblins were. If this battle wasn't hard enough, um, should we remove the horses from the road, fellas? Um, I'm, I'm not very strong, so I don't think I could help. So I think I'm better. I'm going to go ahead and try to drag this guy. <laughs> Make a strength check. Yeah, I think you're able to... You, you can't pick him up, but you can, you can certainly... Yeah, get, just drag him off the road a little bit. Get him off the road. Well, it's a good idea, because you know if the roadway is blocked, then maybe people will start looking around and find your oxen and carts. So. Yeah. Plus, it maintains its presence as an ambush point. Still kind of an ambush point, but mm -hmm. um, uh, very little would like to uh, uh, investigate the scene a little bit deeper to see if we can find if there's anything left over that the looters didn't get. Okay. Yeah, you search, and uh, no need to roll an investigation check. They've been picked clean, uh, unless okay. you're in the market for a scimitar. And or a short bow. There's nothing really to be had. And black arrowed fletched arrows. Black feather arrows. Not I. Anyone else? Good here. Can I uh, pick up a couple of stones? Probably like six stones and put them in my pack. Sure. Okay. Right. I don't think we're equipped to manage three prisoners we could uh leave the the, the two that are hogtied with the cart or wagon i guess they really trust them around there i do not yeah wiser just to be rid of them we already, time have, to... we already have yeek uh, so i'm just saying they're... they're more trouble than you know it's worth. He says, that, Fine. That one's my she cousin, but I, I don't really like him. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Yeek. 
All right. Cold. He used to pick on me. <laughs> um, I think they're harmless. Except they just tried to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and they only promise not to ambush anyone just for today. <laughs> that's, that's just yeek, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Varial walks up and just pulls out his dagger and just back. Okay. If no one stops you, they die. We can't have predators like these along these roads. Never leave an enemy at your back. <laughs> okay. And let's march Yeek to, to wherever he's going to take us. Okay. And he explains to you it's about maybe five miles uh, off to the north and west through the woods. And you guys walk. And it doesn't take you long to get there. Maybe I don't know an hour and change. Uh, you would, you would, you would guess. Um, about halfway through, Yeek looks back at you and ah! and he just like starts booking it. Just starts running down this like little uh, footpath, and then he jumps way up in the air, and then he just face plants. <laughs> Yeek got away. And uh, um, he's just laying in the path in front of you. And then he gets up I, and starts uh, to take off again. Can I make an acrobatics check to try and catch him? Sure. What is your movement speed? 30. His is also 30, but uh, he's pretty bad beaten up. Not tied up, though. Uh, Could I... Um... As he's running away, conjure an illusion of like a thick, bra like bramble bush in front of him, like a, a thorn bush. Okay. Yeah. And then so you make, okay, you do that. It appears in front of him and it definitely stops him, uh, slows his speed. Um, Very will make a perception check. Okay. You notice right before, right where he jumps, uh, something on the terrain doesn't look right, and you stop in your tracks. There appears to be a uh, badly covered pit trap in front of you. Oh. Yeek, you ask for mercy, and you do these things that <laughs> make me not want to trust you. Yeek was just showing you the... How to jump over the pit. <laughs> Just like that, see? Here. And he runs and he jumps back. Like this! Whoop. And he slips and he almost falls in. Uh. <laughs> see? Mm. And then you could just easily walk around in the woods, though. All right. I'll, um... I'll take my whip out and just wrap it around his neck and say, all right, let's go. <laughs> you can't breathe very well. <clears throat> all right. So let's put you back on Sword Coast map and reveal some stuff. So you make your way to the Cragmaw hideout. Let's reveal. Where is it? There it is. Boom. So he leads you to the Cragmaw hideout, and um, we're actually gonna—I think we're gonna cut it off here in just a minute. So let me uh, just put you on that map, and then we'll uh, we'll pick it up there next time. Boop. Boop. Ariel, Revo, Ephraim's in the bathroom, but he'll be along shortly. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Yeah, before you go up there, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where you find yourself. And he leads you to the front of this cave, and he points. They must be in there. And uh, 
that's where we'll that's where we'll pick up next week. So I, th- I think we'll just cool. stop it now. We'll do a little short one tonight and uh, pick it up next time. Sounds okay. good. Cool. cool. Good job, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Let me stop the stream here. Stop the recording. <laughs>